Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a very quick update and then um, a discussion of the books that I got to while I was gone. I did not mean to take a break. <laughs> I did not anticipate this. My husband got a new job and unfortunately his schedule was completely opposite what it was before. And we didn't really know this going into it. It's fine, but I had to adjust. My baby who's eight months old had to adjust and that meant less sleep, less time, and a lot less reading. So and unfortunately, my husband's new job does not involve like painting minis full time, but he does still do that. That's what's back there. So yeah, new job, uh, change of schedule. So I was just not able to catch up and I'm used to the schedule now, I hope. And I will be able to hopefully be on here more and have, you know, get more reading done. I did manage to finish two things and neither was great, but I'll just give a quick overview of each. So I read a book on Norse mythology. Um, I'll put it here. It was narrated, this was audible. It was narrated by Stephen Fry, who I do like. And that was kind of the main selling point. After I read Sky in the Deep, which is a, that Viking book, I thought, okay, well, I don't know anything about like Norse mythology, so why the heck not? And it was, okay. Um, Greek mythology is quite, a lot of grape, I wish that we did not have to censor like this. And I don't think you could say this word either, but I'll put it there. Uh, and just general bad behavior. So uh, lots of murder, lots of, you know, just unpleasantness. Um, so I'm not like big on mythology stuff like that. I don't love it. And I didn't like this as much um, as, you know, I was kind of hoping it would be different, but it's less dark, I suppose, than Greek mythology. Um, Thor kind of comes out looking kind of dumb. Uh, Odin doesn't look great. He's kind of, I, I didn't love him. And then Loki is like the trickster who like turns very dark at the end. <laughs> so it was okay. Uh, it's like a collection of stories and it was interesting enough, I suppose, but I, I got bogged down with just like, okay, we need to wrap this up. Uh, there's, I'll just give you like an example. So one of the stories talks about how you get the spark of like the divine spark in you. So this is their, their version of that. So they send down um, one of the gods, and I think it's the one who is on the bridge, if I'm not mistaken, I'll put the name there. And he's like, is on the Bifrost, you know, like seeing people who come um, to see the gods, if I'm not mistaken. And anyway, they send him down, doesn't really matter who, but they send him down and he meets like very poor couple. And they're referred to as grandmother and grandfather, you know, all of these different couples kind of like have a version of grandma or grandpa. So there's a couple, first couple, poor people. So he stays with these people for a night. Like they give him the hospitality and take care of him. And he is, you know, eats and drinks with them. And they give him the little bit that they have because they're very poor. And then he sleeps in between them. Uh, this is not graphic. Thank the Lord. But it's like, okay, he sleeps in between them. And then nine months later, the woman gives birth. <laughs> I'm like, this is how you repay them. I don't know that this is the gift you think it is. <laughs> But I suppose, um, have to come up with this somehow. So she gives birth and that's like the first child born with the divine spark. And then all of the children that they, he has, you know, that kid, um, have that. And they're the class of poor people. So it's weird that this also like accounts for class structure, which I thought was a very odd thing. They're like, Hey, it's not just that like he went down and found humans and like had a child with a human. Um, he went down to the first poor people. Then he goes to like a middle-class family and does the same thing, like asks for hospitality, stays with them. And then he ends up once again, sleeping in between the two, in between the couple. Nine months later, the woman gives birth. And uh, yeah, so then he goes to a very rich couple, like um, the wealthy. And this is the only one that like, once the child is born, same situation, he tells them like, hey, you're, you know, I'm your father. Um, so apparently they're the only ones who really needed to know. But it was weird because it's like, they were like, we must account for class structure here too. We can't just be like, here's your divine spark humanity. They're like, no, and you're meant to be poor and you get to be a little bit wealthier and you get to be rich. <laughs> I I don't know why. Thought, I thought that was super odd. <laughs> but hey, we're all born equal, but not. Not so equal. <laughs> uh, and that was like one of the stories. So you get that idea. And then there's a story about Loki tricking these dwarves into making these gifts for the god and the gods and that's how Thor gets his hammer and Loki kind of gets treated kind of you know not very well by the gods but still like wants to hang out with them 
for some reason. Um, and yeah, he does like tricks, you know, like he shaves off all of uh, Thor's wife's hair and stuff and then has to like get her like a gold, you know, um, wig, I guess. <laughs> and stuff like that. It was okay. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was just like, oh, okay. It's interesting enough, I suppose. But mm, I didn't. It was okay. All right, then getting to my bookstagram made me buy it. And this I've had way too long, but this was all the rage a few years ago. And that would be Fable. It's okay. <laughs> Better than Sky in the Deep. It's the same author. And I will say she has learned um, from that book to this book. There is more character development, more uh, motivation. And I felt like I connected a bit more with Fable. I mean, definitely more with Fable than I did with, um, oh, I don't remember her name, the girl from Sky in the Deep. But I will say that she, her, where she's really lacking is romance. Um, I don't need romance. This book did not need romance, but she's going to have it. And it's going to be very poorly like established. I did not buy in, but I feel like she's saying, I told you that they have a, this is romance. I'm telling you it's romance. And I'm like, no, mm -mm. you can't tell me at the end of the book, like, oh yeah, they've always had feelings. Like, didn't you notice that? No, you didn't. You, you have to establish that. You can't just be like, well, because I said there's, there's chemistry and there's a relationship and there's feelings. Now you have to buy in. And I'm like, no, I will not. I absolutely refuse. I did not feel this romance at all. It didn't need it. I feel like they have, this is part of a duology. Well, and I think there's another book. So really a trilogy. Um, but the other one I believe is a prequel. So however you want to set that up. But this book does not lay the groundwork for this very sudden relationship that then has a intimate, you know, it's like kind of a fade to black situation. And I just, I was like, no, it didn't need it. It absolutely didn't need it. You could have laid the groundwork for their relationship and then develop it in the second book. That's what you needed. But I feel like they had to, well, this author really felt like she had to have that end, have like the YA, like, oh, there's romance. And I'm like, eh, no, no, I don't buy this. I do. I absolutely do not buy this. West, who is the guy that she's supposedly has something with, um, there's no chemistry. He is like Finn and Ray in the first. <laughs> when you thought that they were going to be maybe together, like they were kind of doing something, you know, there's a lot of like Finn yelling Ray's name in that first, um, you know, of the sequel movies. I can't even think of the name. Okay. Give me a second. Force Awakens. It's Force Awakens, isn't it? I think it's Force Awakens. And that first one where you kind of thought, Hey, there's maybe something there. Like maybe there's going to be something established in the second movie. Well, then that didn't happen. And then it went way off track, but that's not the point. The point is, is that this is about as much as you're getting from this book. Like he says her name a lot, uh, mostly annoyed. Like she's doing things that he's like, fable. And you're like, yeah, she's doing that thing. That's annoying, whatever. <laughs> like I did not buy it. I did not feel like there was anything between them. Um, this is a story about a girl who gets left on an island by her father and she has to figure out how to get off. It takes her four years. She's uh, working. There's a lot of like merchant trading ships and She's got to try and get out on one of them. And then she does. And the bulk of the story really centers around her and the crew. And it's uh, the guy who's the captain, I guess, or whatever, is West. And then you have Willa and then the other crew members. And it's okay. I mean, it is slightly more interesting than Sky in the Deep. I will give it that. I, but I am also just more interested in like this kind of stuff with the uh, ships and not exactly pirates, but they might as well be. I feel like she just didn't want to commit to pirates. I'm like, well, the way that they act, they might as well just be pirates, but merchant traders. <laughs> and yeah, I, it's okay. I don't know if I'll do a full review. I feel very meh about it, very meh about the characters. And I don't think I'm going to read the second book, but I do have to give the author credit for the improvement in her writing and storytelling and characterization because I do think that has vastly improved from Sky in the Deep. Vastly. I liked Fable a lot more than I did um, Aylin or Aylin, I think was her name. And she had a sympathetic story where you felt like she really was like having to work so hard and do all this stuff to get off this island. And, you know, there was a lot of 
things that happened that weren't really her fault. It was just things like that were forced on her because she just was abandoned by her dad on this island. Um, and it was like, hey, if you get off and, you know, come find me, then I'll give you what you deserve. Because her dad is a big, like, like well-known. Um, he has a lot of ships under his command. So she believes that if she can get off this island, she's going to go get her inheritance and be able to be on his crew and have like a place um, with him. So that's kind of the premise of the story. I like Willa, who was the other girl that's on the um, ship crew. I thought that her and um, Fable's relationship should have been more developed because they had a good, you know, the only two girls, like the only girls on the crew, like they could have had a really good relationship. And it's there. It's just not as developed as I would have liked. Um, I didn't feel any sympathy for the dad. And I think the book really wants you to feel bad. But, you know, I make bad choices because I didn't have the choice, like, there was nothing else available to me as kind of his excuse for abandoning her. And I'm just like, no, you're not selling me on that. No. Um, <laughs> uh, and his name is Saint. Also, those like very generic, like I felt like seafaring names like West and Babel and Saint and Willa and all this. I'm just like, okay, whatever. But point being, it was okay. Uh, I, I like I said, I don't think I'm gonna read the second book, but I am happy to have this off of my bookstore <laughs> made me buy it shelf because it's been on their way too long. And I think it's like the author just needs to work on a few things. And I do think that the beginning of this book, when she talks about Fable and her, um, diving and her abilities and stuff, she's really laying the groundwork for Fable having, you know, suffered and had to like survive. And I think that that was really good. It kept Fable from being a Mary Sue character. She did have abilities that were developed over four years of this struggle. And I think that that was really important. It really set her apart from like, oh, she's just this amazing character who has, you know, these abilities. She does give her magic, <laughs> which I was annoyed by because it did not need to be in there because she would have known how to dredge and do all these things and, you know, um, dive for these things, you know, that she's trying to get under the ocean, you know. She would have had this ability developed over four years, but she does have a magic ability that I'm not going to get into because I would, you know, it's kind of a spoiler, I guess. But I was annoyed that I was like, why would you give her that? Like, that's kind of odd that they would just throw in it. And it doesn't seem like the world has a magic system at least not one we're talking about or have any in any way developed. It's just like, oh, and by the way, she has this magic. And I'm, okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm going on three and a half stars on this one because I do see the potential there and I do see the improvement, the vast improvement from this book, um, from Sky in the Deep to this book. And I think there were some parts that were very well written. Like I said, I like the diving scene. I like the um, establishing of like what her skills and her being able to survive and she's smart. She has to hide her stuff, you know, so that it's not stolen by other people. She has to be very careful. So you have this where she's actually set up as this character that has these abilities. She can still get beat up. She can still get hurt. She's obviously like a small girl trying to make it in this world of guys that basically don't care. They said they're all basically pirates, but we're not using that terminology. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I got to. Um, I'm sorry I was gone for so long. I will definitely be back on here trying to read more and talk about books. And also I want to talk about the upcoming Netflix series that they're doing based off of the books, um, The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, because I have stuff to say and a lot of concerns about that. So I'm still trying to finish up Attack on Titan um, and then Veroni Kenshin also. And then I'm not sure what my next book will be. I'm kind of trying to like step off from this like YA and kind of maybe read something a little bit more serious. Um, but I will keep you guys posted <laughs> and let me know what you're reading. If you had anything that you loved while I was out for a couple of weeks, if you're anything really good, let me know in the comments and I will talk to you guys again soon.